कैशे आई मीन अफकोर्स इट वॉज नॉट जस्ट क्रिएटेड फॉर एल आर यू कैशे काइंड ऑफ इम्प्लीमेंटेशन बट इट इज एक्चुअली गोइंग टू बी हेल्पफुल फॉर एल आर यू कैशे इन विच एज द नेम सजेस्ट लीस्ट रिसेंटली यूज एलिमेंट इज बींग रिमूव फ्रॉम द कैशे सो इफ यू हैव हंड्रेड एलिमेंट्स इन द कैशे एंड द कैशे इज फुल नाउ हाउ डू वी रिमूव एलिमेंट फ्रॉम द कैशे सो दैट वी कैन रिटेन द हंड्रेड एलिमेंट्स ओनली what i mean to say is this is called a cache eviction technique when your cache has a limited size if it is full now who do we remove do we remove the first element do we remove the last element do we remove the middle element so we follow certain eviction policy hi everyone welcome to my channel code with is by varsha we have been doing a playlist on internal working of several different data structures in java we started with hash map we have done hash set concurrent collections concurrent hash map and copy and write array list and we have done a one on and we have done recently on array list internal working as well so today as we know we will talk about linked hash map so if you want to brush up on uh, hash map internals i would recommend to watch this video the ultimate guide to ha java hash map so that we can correlate with the concepts and then jump on to this particular one apart from that we are also doing a playlist on core java interview questions so if you guys are interested to explore that do check it out links to the playlist are in the description so now without further ado let's begin okay so what do we have we first talk about the overview the features the hierarchy where does link hash map fit in then we talk about the constructors and of course the internal working and we'll wrap up with the follow up questions so link hash map it is consisting of two parts link and hash map it is based out of hash table and linked list linked list has a special purpose over here we'll come to that why it is called linked hash map because we can understand it is based out of linked list and if you have gone through the internals of hash map you know the underlying data structure is a hash table or an array now as it is a hash map it is very obviously going to be used to store the key value pairs we are clear with this what is linked list doing over here the elements are stored in the order of insertion so the special purpose of linked list is that it is going to maintain the order of the entries a normal hash map is not ordered it is not ordered so whatever order you add in a hash set or a hash map you add 1 2 3 if you try to traverse and print it out it might be 2 3 1 it is not maintaining the order of entry but we know that list is a special type which is ordered in nature array list is ordered link list is ordered because it is ordered so now we want the best of both worlds we want the hashing technique so we are using a hash map to store the key value pairs and we want the ordered nature also we want to maintain the order of entries so to combine the best of both worlds we introduced a new data structure which is called linked hash map declared in the java.util package implements the map interface and it extends the hash map so the parent class of linked hash map is hash map and that is why i have started from the beginning i have reiterated that you need to understand the hash map first in order to understand linked hash map okay so elements can be accessed in the order of insertion as well as in the order of access so there are two types of order and this is going to be the core of today's video what is the difference between insertion order and what is the difference between like insertion order and the access order so this is what the internal working of linked hash map is all about so we'll explore more on that in the coming slides now let's talk about the features it maintains a doubly linked list as we know uh, a singly linked list is what you have a linked list you have a pointer and you point to the next node in case of a doubly linked list apart from the value you have to maintain two pointers one is going to point to the next node and the another previous i mean the another pointer is going to point to the previous node we use a hash table for the retrieval of key value pairs as we know that and it preserves the order of element insertion in um, if you add 1 2 and 3 into the linked hash map and you try to print you are always going to get 1 2 3 because it is maintaining the insertion order by default it also provides an option for access order so like i said insertion order and access order are two different things you have added 1 2 3 this is the way you have inserted and you would want it to be back in that order but in case of access order the most recently accessed element is placed at the end of the iteration order if this is confusing to you right now i can understand it but we have a special we have a special purpose of doing this we'll explore more on that uh it may have one null key multiple null values does not allow duplicate keys now these features are again coming from the hash map so it is going to be the same for both and it is non synchronized so this is important we will not talk much about this but just to give a brief context that linked hash map is 
not a concurrent collection, which means if multiple threads try to manipulate this data structure and uh, that may result in a race condition. So like concurrent hash map is a thread safe collection. Uh, copy on write arrow list is a thread safe collection, but linked hash map is not. Okay, so that is why it is called no, not non-synchronized. If you want to do it, we will see later how can we do it. Coming to the hierarchy, we know that hash map is extending the hash map class. Uh, sorry, linked hash map is extending the hash map class and this is uh, implementing the map interface. Coming to the declaration, uh, this is how it looks like linked hash map extending the hash map and implementing the map interface. Um, internal structure, like we talked about this, uh, it is having a doubly linked list. So this is how the entry looks like the before and after pointers are there. This is how an entry node the entry node, right? Whatever you insert into the hash map is the entry node. It is used. Uh, w linked list is used to maintain the handle insertion order. And these are the fields. So we have the key value and we have the. So here we have the key and value and the before and after. Obviously, you're going to store the key and value. And uh, we have the before and after uh, uh, pointers, which is going to point to the previous node and point to the next node. Now the constructors, these are little important. Of course, there are many different constructors, but we have highlighted three of them. One is the default constructor. Okay. Another one is the one which takes in some capacity. You initialize it with some capacity. And another one, the third one, which is important. And that is because it has a Boolean flag of access order, which is by default false. Okay. If it is false, it means the insertion order is being followed. But if it is true, then the access order is being followed. Let me reiterate, access order was, if you set that access order to true, the most recently accessed element is going to be placed at the end of the linked hash map. So if, if your most accessed node is this, suppose you have these, these nodes and you recently accessed node number, let's say I call this P, then if you access P recently, P will be put at the end and P will come over here and P will be removed from here. So this is the access order. We'll talk again more about it uh, in the later slides. Why is it important? Why do we need to know this? We will talk about that. So linked hash map insertion order by default, it maintains the order of entries. So like I said, the access order flag is false by default. So if you insert one, two, three, it is always going to give you one, two, three only. Now, uh, this order remains constant unless we are removing it. So if you see this particular code snippet, we have added one, two, three. So since we have added one, two, three, and when we are trying to traverse through the map and trying to print it, it is maintaining the order one, two, three itself. So this is what is holding true when the insertion order, which is by default order is being followed. And this is what is the primary goal of using a linked list in the linked hash map. Now moving on to the access order. Why do we need this? The access order is important for a specific type of implementation and that is called LRU cache. I mean, of course, it was not just created for LRU cache kind of implementation, but it is actually going to be helpful for LRU cache in which, as the name suggests, least recently used element is being removed from the cache. So if you have 100 elements in the cache and the cache is full, now how do we remove element from the cache so that we can retain the 100 elements only. What I mean to say is this is called a cache eviction technique. When your cache has a limited size, if it is full, now who do we remove? Do we remove the first element? Do we remove the last element? Do we remove the middle element? So we follow certain eviction policy. So LRU is one of the policies where we removed the element which has been least recently accessed or the element which has not been accessed for the longest amount of time. Because something which has recently been used, any element which has recently been used from the cache, there's a possibility it is going to be used again. So the cache, which the element which has been sitting in the cache for a very long time is the least recently used one. Now, remember when we talked about access order, we said that the element which is the most frequently used is being put at the end of the linked hash map, right? So if in that way, all the most recently used elements are being added to the linked hash maps, end of the hash map. So in that way, all the most recently used elements go at the end of the linked hash map and we conveniently remove elements from the front of the from the front of the linked hash map. So if you have one, two, three, let's say the initial number of elements 
and two was recently accessed. You remove two from here, you put two over here. All are linked. Again, one was recently accessed. You remove one from here, one is removed. You put one at the end. Now three is there. So which is the least recently accessed? Three, because recently we accessed two. Recently we accessed one. So three is the least recently accessed element. So if there is a need to evict, who we will remove? Who we will evict? Three we will remove. Or three is the one which will be evicted from the cache. So this is the concept of why we are going to use that access order equal to true that boolean flag. So on accessing an entry, move to the end of the order, making it the most recently accessed entry we just now saw. On iterating the elements which are accessed from least recently used to most recently used. We just saw that example. 3 was least recently used, 2 and 1 was most recently used. And while creating the linked hash map, we know that uh, by default insertion order is, is going to be true. But if you set the access order, that flag to true, then the access order becomes true and insertion order is not maintained. In that case, the access order is maintained. So if we see this particular example, see, I have used 1, 2 and 3, I've added to the hash map. And I've recently accessed this particular 2 and en entry number 2 by doing a get. Because of that, now what is happening? 1 is printed. 3 is printed and 2 is printed. So initially you had 1, 2, 3. I access 2, 2 is removed and 2 goes at the end. So you have 1. So this is the reason you have 1, 3 and 2. So now I am hoping the clear difference you have understood between insertion order and access order and why both of them are important. Now moving to another aspect which is the structural modification. This is just an FIA, just a discussion that what is a structural modification? When do we say that the hash map is structurally modified? What is structural modification? Adding, deleting, removing, updating. So in case of access ordered linked hash map, any operation which impacts the order of iteration is going to be saying a structural modification. Like we did a, uh, we did a get over here, right? So we are structurally modifying the linked hash map because this particular node number two, two went at the end. So the linked hash map is structurally modified. Now, in case of uh, uh, insertion order hash map, changing the value of a key does not mean a structural modification. You have key as 3 and value as 5. And let's say you have changed the value of uh, 3 to 6. Now, this is in case of insertion order, IO. Okay, in case of insertion order, it doesn't matter. Because you see, you are inserting 1, 2 and 3. In between, for one of the entries, you have changed the value. But that is not violating your insertion order. So changing value of a key is not going to mean anything. But in case of access order, like we saw, simply just querying a map with a get is a structural modification. Of course, changing the value of a key also would count as a structural modification for access ordered map. But the point is in case of insertion order, these kind of things do not matter. Because once you have added the entry into the hash map, after that, if you're changing the value of a key, it doesn't matter for insertion order. It does matter in case of access order. So that is why this is very crucial. It's very critical in case of access ordered maps. Okay, so now we'll talk about one important method, which is called remove eldest entry from linked hash map. So what it does is it is used to control the removal of the eldest entry. What does it mean? Let's say you have added in the hash map one, and then you added two, three, four, five, and went till 100. What is the eldest entry, the oldest one? One, one is the eldest, 100 is the youngest entry. So if this is also a kind of eviction technique that we use, so if you want to remove the oldest entry from the hash map, you can use this method. But there are a couple of catch, but there are a couple of catches that you have to understand. This, mod this particular method doesn't directly modify the map. It is only going to return a boolean and you are free to modify that boolean to satisfy your use case. By default, this method is going to return false. If you see the source code, it is actually returning false. You are given the choice to override it and implement a custom eviction policy. So it returns true if the eldest entry should be removed. So what is happening is it is by default returning false. The source code is saying that I want to retain all the entries of the hash map. I don't want it to remove the eldest or the oldest entry. But your requirement can be such that you have overridden this method and you have returned the Boolean clause in such a way that you can remove the oldest entry based on your business logic. So you are given that flexibility to do that. So if you see this example here, we are trying to override this by saying that max size is greater than max number of entry. The moment size of the hash map is greater than three, remove the oldest entry. So make it, let's say hundred entries. I have a fixed size of only hundred entries I can retain in my hash map. So what is my approach? By default, if it is false, I will not be able to remove the oldest entry, but I want to remove the oldest entry. 
why i want to remove the oldest entry because i have a fixed size i can only hold 100 entries so the moment 101 one at element come i cannot fit into my hash map so i have to remove the entry which came in very first which is let's say entry which was entry number 1 so what i did here i can put max entries as whatever your constant value is in case of 100 the moment size is exceeding 100 you are going to override this particular method by giving this clause internally it is going to manipulate the hash map and it is going to remove the oldest entry from the hash map this is also a different form of a eviction technique when you have certain size constraint on your given hash map we have learned about the access order flag setting that to true for implementing the LRU cache least recently accessed. This is also another kind of eviction technique where you don't remove the least recently accessed element. You remove the oldest element by overriding this particular method. So in this case, if you see what we are doing is we have one, two and three and four. So the eldest one is one. And if you see the output, when we are trying to print it out, we are only getting two, three, four. One was removed, right? Now let's wrap up with the follow-up questions. How does the performance of a linked hash map compare to a regular hash map? So here we have a distinction of both. So we know that hash map uses the hash table and linked hash map is using an additional uh, doubly linked list to maintain the order. So the get and put operation that is happening in case of hash map is going to be more performant. It is going to be overall high performance because you do not have to maintain the additional overhead of maintaining a doubly linked list like we are doing in the case of a linked hash map. So performance-wise, the get and put methods can the basic, the rudimentary methods, the get and put methods can have a better performance. And also because you are not using, also because you are not using any additional data structure in case of hash map apart from the hash table, we are using less memory. So overall, if we have to compare linked hash map and hash map, hash map for regular hash map operations, it is going to give you a good performance. But the trade-off comes that if you want to maintain the order of the entries or if you want to use it for implementing LRU cache, for any kind of cache implementation or eviction policy, then you will have to use the linked hash map. The use case is such that you will have to use the linked hash map for the above mentioned reason. How does linked hash map handle concurrency? We have already discussed that linked hash map is a not synchronized data structure. So it is not thread safe and it is going to throw the concurrent modification exception. It is going to throw the concurrent modification exception and multiple threads are trying to access. We have seen this in the earlier videos of threads and concurrency. How do you make it concurrent then? Like how do you handle this thread safety part? There are two ways you can do it. Either use the concurrent hash map or use the static method of the collections class that is synchronized map. This is how you can externally synchronize it. But it is by default it is not thread safe. When would using a linked hash map be useful over a hash map? Like we have said that the order of insertion or the order of access is important, then you can use it. Like we have said using like implementing a cache. In that case, when you have a specific use case, only then you should use a linked hash map and not otherwise because thread safety is a concern and performance is a concern. So with that, we will wrap up the session on linked hash map today. Hope you guys have found this useful and have understood in detail about the internal working of linked hash map. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And also do like and share the content with your peers, friends and colleagues, whoever, whoever might find it useful, so that it will give us a boost of motivation to bring out more content like this. Thank you so much.